Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to create AWS S3 bucket using the latest AWS SDK APIs for Java. To begin with, I have created a project using Maven. And as you can see on my screen, the Maven form has been imported inside IntelliJ. Let's go ahead and have a look at the dependencies that we have included inside this project. So as you can see on my screen, we have a few basic elements that are required in pom.xmls are defined. We are calling this particular artifact as AWS S3 create bucket. And we are setting the Java version to 11. Let me just scroll down. You can see that the very first dependency that I have included is different from what the earlier versions used to provide. So this time we have a group ID starting with software.amazon.aws SDK. Yes, this is the latest group ID available for the new version of AWS SDKs, followed by the artifact ID of S3. Now, this is very interesting. AWS is now providing very lean dependencies for using the AWS services. Earlier, there was one single monolith bundle which was available, which used to make your application very bulky. Now, this time it is a very lean jar file that will get included in your application bundle. As of writing this program, I'm using the version 2.17.123. All right, that is what required in order to use the S3 SDK API. The second dependency that I've included is for SLF 4G and it is purely an optional dependency. If you don't include it, it is still fine. Your program will still run, but it will issue a warning and you will see that warning inside a console. That's all. That is what we required in order to use the S3 SDK APIs. Let's move ahead and you can see that I have created a package called as com.carbonrider.cloud.aws.s3. This is my base package. Inside this, I'm going to create a class. So let me just right click on it, click on new, click on class. And I'm going to name this class as create bucket. That's it. It should create a class. Looks good. We have our class created called as create bucket. Now inside this, I'm going to first create a static main method and entry point for our application. For that, there is a shortcut called as PSVM, which will create a skeleton for the main method. And I'm quickly going to define two static variables, which is going to use the access key and secret key from the environment variables. Now those who are already familiar with uh, the AWS APIs, you know that this information is required in order to talk to the AWS services. So I'm going to first create a variable called as AWS access key. And the value of that, we are going to take it from the environment variable. So I'm going to say system dot get env. Again, our environment variable name is also similar. AWS underscore access underscore key. Don't make any mistake over here. Public static final string another variable for secret key looks good same convention we are going to use the environment apis and this time we are going to access another variable called as aws secret key let me quickly show you where these particular variables are defined so i'll click on edit configuration now this configuration i already created in case you're creating your project from a scratch you need to manually create this configuration now the crux is that you need to first specify the main class. In our case, it is create bucket. The second and the most important thing is defining this environment variables. So you can see that the entries are populated. You can just click on this plus sign and start adding these variables. So I have an environment variable called as AWS underscore access underscore key, followed by the second variable AWS underscore secret underscore key. And the values of this variable, you can get it from the AWS IAM console. Just go ahead and create a new user. Let me quickly show you that. So this is the uh, S3 console. I'm going to open the IAM console in a separate tab. Now this is a very brand new account and that is why if I go to the first tab, you will see that there are no buckets available. And if I go to the second tab, I just created a new user. I'll click on that users. My username is carbonrider-aws. Definitely I'm going to delete it after this particular video. And inside that, I have assigned a group for this particular user, which basically has 
and Amazon S3 full access. Along with that, at the time of creating this user, I indicated that I'm going to use a programmatic API using this user. So I need the credentials for it. And it will give you an opportunity to download this particular access key and the secret key. Don't worry, uh, I'm not hiding this information at this point of time. Everything is going to get cleaned up once this video recording gets completed. This is just for your demonstration. Okay, so let's go back to IntelliJ. We have our two variables created. Now the next thing that we need to do is to create the credential object. So I'm going to create an object called as credential. For that, the type is AWS credentials. I'm going to name this variable as credentials. Note that this AWS credential is actually an interface, not a concrete implementation. So in our case, we're going to say that this credential object can be constructed using AWS basic credentials. That's a helper class to create the credential object using the secret key and the access key. Let's call this create method and pass the two arguments. You can see that the help is indicating the very first argument is access key ID. And the second is secret access key. So in our case, it is AWS underscore secret key. Okay, we are good with the credential object. The next thing that we require is the actual S3 client object. To do that, I'm going to use S3 client as a type. I'm going to name this particular object as S3 client. And interestingly, in the new SDK APIs, AWS is providing a lot of builder objects. And to create the S3 client, the same thing, we need to use S3 client dot builder. And we need to call few methods on top of this. So the very first method that I'm going to call is the region. We need to provide the region information. Um, the region that I'm going to make use of. So you can use this constants or I can say region dot of us hyphen east hyphen one a bad practice of hard coding a region inside a code you should always source it either from a database or you should have an environment variable but for our example we are good the next method that we need to call is the credential provider so we need to pass the credentials for this s3 client and to do that we are going to say that this credential object is statically created and that is why we have a helper class called as static credential provider let's go ahead and type that static credentials provider i'm depending upon the help or the auto assess feature of intelj pretty lazy with typing the code so static credentials provider dot create and we need to pass the credential object that we created now most of the things are auto populated that's why you are seeing that uh, the things are quickly getting developed so the final thing that we need to do is to call a build method this will create the S3 client object and we can now use it to create our bucket. Let's go ahead and create a third and a very important object called as a bucket request. And to do that, we have a create bucket request as a class. Now, this is another change that you will notice within the new SDK. There are a lot of request objects that are provided which capture information about the granular in um, you know gradual operation that we're going to perform so in this case it is create bucket request the variable name is bucket request followed by the create bucket request builder again a builder class you can see that and inside this we need to pass the name of the bucket that we want to create so i'm going to call a bucket method and then i will pass the name of the bucket so let me call it as carbon rider hyphen new aws this is going to be the bucket name. And finally, since it is a builder object, we need to call the build method on top of that. Looks good. We have created three objects as of now. The first object is the credentials. The second object is the S3 client. The third object is the actual request. Now we need to send this request to AWS. To do that, let's go ahead and call S3 client dot create bucket, a dedicated method for creating a bucket. And we are passing that bucket request object to it looks good now this should create our bucket but at the end just to make sure that we get some meaningful message on the screen i'm going to make use of this system dot out dot print ln and just going to put a greeting message so let's call it as bucket created with some excitement let me just save that 
hope so everything is fine and i'm going to quickly execute this particular class so i'm going to call the run create bucket s3 and this should take some time looks cool the execution has just started and it says the bucket has been created let's verify by going to the aws console so i'll quickly switch back to the s3 management console when so we don't see anything yet that's because it doesn't auto refresh on its own so i'm going to create the refresh button let's go ahead and see what happens you can see that the new bucket is now available let me click on that and obviously since it's a very fresh new bucket there is nothing inside that but congratulations you just created your very first bucket using the latest aws sdk apis and with this i'm going to wind up a video but in the next videos we are going to talk about a lot of other apis which are available till then take care and build something